Cynthia Cox, and this is the Nonprofit Minute. Today I'm joined by Eve Todd, my audit manager here at Cox & Associates, also known as my right-hand woman, and we want to discuss some common deficiencies that we see in our audit clients. Eve, what do you think is one of the most common deficiencies we find in our nonprofit clients? Uh, a lack of segregation of duties. It's probably number one. Why do you think that is? Uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, first of all, the client may not have the, the budget for a larger staff, or they may be worried about confidentiality. And so they have a small staff to begin with. And then that is a trusted employee, and they let that employee do a variety of tasks. So they end up with not enough people to do a variety of tasks that could actually end up costing them in the long run. Right. Eve, why don't you give us some examples of what a lack of segregation of duties looks like? For instance, that person might be uh, recording the checks, reporting them to the general ledger, uh, paying the bills, signing the checks, mm -hmm. and reconciling the bank statement. You know, Eve, after 17 years of working with nonprofit organizations, I think I've got one or two uh, war stories that I can tell. Like the uh, school, we have several schools that we work with, and we've been told by more than one of them that they have people come and pay a whole year's tuition at one time. In fact, one school told me that they had a parent walk in put on the bookkeeper's desk $12,000 in cash to pay for the year's tuition. That bookkeeper had to count the money, had to make out the deposit, had to carry it to the bank, had to put it into the student record, and there was a real lack of segregation of duties, not to mention personal safety issues dealing with $12,000 in cash. So does that mean that nobody is holding our bookkeepers and our clients accountable? It can mean that. They, wow. have a lot of, they have a lot of responsibility and a lot of power and somebody doesn't always go back and, and check what they do. So an example uh, on the receiving side would be that somebody who receives the money, prepares a deposit slip, maybe makes a deposit, records it in the general ledger, and oh, let's not forget, puts it in the donor records too. We've seen all of those duties happen by one person, haven't we, Eve? Definitely. So it sounds like that nobody's really holding these people accountable. It can seem like that, yes. And that's an issue. That's a real concern. Signing checks is not the only way that somebody can have access to the bank account. Oh yeah, got a war story on that one too. I was working with a church client and they had had some fraud and so they had the bookkeeper did not have check signing authority. And they were very proud of that. The problem was he was able to uh, authorize ACH payments. So I looked at the bank statement and there were 12 ACH payments every month that he authorized, which in effect made him a check signer and allowed him to have that real lack of segregation of duties that could potentially lead to fraud. In our next video, we're going to give you some recommended solutions for taking care of a lack of segregation of duties. I'm Cynthia Cox with Cox & Associates CPAs, and we look forward to serving you.